Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, how to grade long jing tea. By the end of this video, you are all gonna be experts in how to assess the quality of China's most famous green tea, Longjing, aka Dragonwell. We call it Imperial Green. If you've not seen our video in China explaining how this tea is made and giving you all the information that you need to know about sourcing Longjing tea, then go check that out afterwards or you can push pause and go check it out now and rejoin us. But today we are going to be talking about how to assess the quality in the cup. In other words, what are the quality markers that you're looking for when you're looking at the leaf and more importantly, when you're tasting the tea. In order to do that, we have released a very limited edition flight box. This is our Longjing flight box. So we're gonna do that flight today with you. So if you've bought this flight box, then make sure that you drink along with us. If you're planning to buy this flight box, then maybe hit pause and rejoin us once you've received your flight box. But if you haven't received a flight box, if you have no intention of buying the flight box, or if it's out of stock, don't worry, because this information is gonna be jam packed with tips from me, a tea buyer, in what you should be looking for in this classic Chinese tea. So let's get started, right. In this flight box, we have three different cultivars of 2019 Longjing. So the same year, but three different cultivars. And if you were lucky enough to buy early enough, we've thrown in an Imperial Green from 2018 so that we can assess the difference that a year makes in this tea. I've got to write a letter which is gonna be in this box but in order to write a letter, I need to get my tasting notes together. So let's dive in to these teas. Here they are, all of these Longjings are in the flight box. They are all pinnacle grade pre-Qingming tea, which means that they were picked before the Qingming festival at the beginning of April. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go check out that other video in China. This was picked on the 16th of March, 2019, and is the earliest picking of the bunch. This one was picked on the 20th of March, 2019. This was picked on the 23rd of March, 2019. And this one here was picked on the 19th of March, 2018. So a year difference almost exactly. Cultivar, very, very important. One of the reasons why we created this flight box is so that you can taste the difference between these long gin cultivars. This one here is the modern Wu Nyu Zhao variety. This one here is long gin 43, also relatively modern, but more classically grown in some of the more original areas of Longjing country. This one here is the original, the authentic. This is the old school. This is Chun Ti Zhong variety, one for the traditionalists. And here we have a Longjing 43 again, but again, a year difference. In fact, these two teas are from the same supplier, one year difference, so you can taste a direct head to head of exactly the same, Tea supplier, but one year difference. Origin, these three teas are from different locations, different parts of Zhejiang province. None of these teas are from Shihu, which is Westlake area. I don't personally like to buy Shihu tea because I think the price to quality ratio is way off in my opinion. It produces very, very good tea, high quality, high consistency, but super expensive. Again, check out that video in China and I explain that in more detail. This one here is from Wenzhou. This one here is from Xinjiang. This one here is from Shaoxing. And as I said, this one is from the same farmer as this one. So that's Xinjiang also. Picking and processing on these are gonna be very, very similar. A bud and one leaf or a bud and two leaf. They are machine fired to fix and then hand fired to finish. Elevation on these are very, very similar. This one here is 780 meters. This one here is 750 meters. We have 600 meters here, and this was slightly lower down the field, so this is 600 meters here. But the elevations are all very, very good for Longjing tea. And as I said in my previous video, elevation is not such a big factor when you are purchasing early spring picked tea. So let's dive straight in to assess the quality of the dry leaf. What are you looking for? And I have to say from the outset that the most important thing is taste. It's very, very difficult to assess quality of Longjing simply by looks because you can find some stunningly beautiful Longjing and it doesn't quite hit the mark 
in the cup. So what, what are we looking for? Well, first of all, we're looking for a vibrancy of color. Okay, you can see that there are color differences here, but what I'd like to draw your attention to is that these three here have more of a vibrant color than this one here, which just looks a little bit more muted and a little bit more sort of opaque, a little bit like it's got a little bit of a gray muted quality. These ones are more vibrant, a year difference, does start to just take down the vibrancy of the color. But you can see even within these three, there's quite a significant difference. Obviously, the Chunti Jong variety is the most yellow. Now, traditionally, Longjing tea should look like this. This is the color of traditional Longjing tea, that sort of pistachio yellow green color. These teas definitely look more green. I would say this has more of a, a vibrant darker green and this has more sort of lime flex to it. It's got dark areas and lime flex. What are we looking for? We're looking for a consistency of color. All of these have a consistency of color. If you saw really wild fluctuations in the color where you saw a lot of greens, and then browns and yellows mixed up together, that would mean that the consistency of the tea is not so good. The level of attention to detail paid in the processing was not high enough. So you're looking for a consistency of color. If you prefer your tea to be more bright and fresh in its green tea taste, and we're gonna get onto taste very soon, then you're gonna be looking for slightly greener teas. If you want more of the traditional roasted nutty notes of a Longjing, then you're looking for slightly yellower leaves. What you don't want to see is very distinct burn marks on the leaves. You don't want to see that it looks very, very dark brown or it has that sort of copper, rusty brown color because that means that it's been scorched during the firing. Again, demonstrating lack of attention to detail in the processing, which will of course affect the taste. Apart from color, let's look at shape. The shape of the Chunti Jong is definitely smaller. You can see you've got smaller, more plump leaves than these, which just have a little bit more length to them and a little bit, um, I would say, thinner looking. They don't look as plump as this one here. So you are looking, ideally with Longjing, for slightly smaller, shorter, and fatter leaves. You don't want to see a lot of inconsistency, so lots of different shapes, tons of different, like from small to large. Again, that shows lack of consistency in production and picking. And also, you don't want to see teas that have excessively long leaves or don't have any buds. And you're gonna see the buds reveal themselves when we brew the tea. Um, also, take a look at the difference in perceived volume here. Now, we've measured these all out. These are all six grams exactly to the point. And this Chunti Jong variety, I think, visually clearly looks like less leaf. These look like much higher volume than this one here. And that shows you that the density of this tea here is higher. Higher density tends to relate to quality. If you've got very, very early spring pickings that have got a lot of body to them, they haven't been allowed to grow, so it's not like late in the season. So late in the spring, you know, the tea grows a little bit faster. It doesn't have as much body to it. Then you're gonna get tea which is lighter and uh, less dense. So you're looking for heavier tea as well. So shorter, fatter, and consistent shape, and a consistent, vibrant color. Those are the two things that you're looking for in the dry leaf, but as I said, it's very difficult to assess I have tasted some ugly, ugly Longjings and really, really enjoyed them. So these are just sort of pointers, but I wouldn't use them as gospel. Okay, we've got our flute brewers here, a nice way to brew these tea. So I'm gonna put them all out in front of you here and we're gonna throw these leaves in. Six grams exactly. So we recommend 3.5 grams per 100 mil. You can reduce it if you'd like, but this is how I like to drink my long drink. Nice, big leaf to water ratio. Really extract the best out of these leaves and get a full, long, enduring session of tea drinking. I'll put these away. Right, let's take a look at these, let's just drop them down and you can see what I mean here. This one here, the volume is definitely 
much, much lower, which means that they are denser. I'm going to give them a quick rinse. I'm literally going to pour hot water just over them. I'm not even going to cover them. So the flute brewer allows me to do that, just collects the rinse at the bottom. This is 80 to 85 degree water. So about 175 Fahrenheit. I have my lovely little Nishin clay pig teapet. These are fresh in. If you want to grab one, then they're available at mayleaf.com. Really, really love the feel of this. So smooth and just so nice to hold. It's made of Nishin clay. So it's going to develop over time, develop a nice patina because the clay is porous. So a lucky day for the tea pig. Four different long jing teas. Delicious. Right, so now we're gonna have a sniff of this, these wet leaves and already I'm getting this incredible palette of aromas. Ah, oh. okay, let's have a sniff. So this is the Wu Yu Zhao. Wu Yu Zhao cultivar, as I said in the video previously, this is the most modern cultivar. Early harvest. What does early harvest mean? It means you can bring it to market quicker, which means you can charge a higher price for it. It also has higher yields than the original Chun Ti Zhong. I'm getting some um, savory note, like a, a vegetable soup note. I'm getting uh, artichokes. I'm getting a little bit of a sour, like unripe mango, green mango. I'm getting some sea air, a little bit of that beach rock note happening. And a little bit of the chestnuts, a little bit of that roasted nuttiness, but not that much. Here's Longjing 43. Longjing 43 is probably the cultivar which is, is being used the most all around Zhejiang. So if you are picking up a Longjing tea, chances are it's going to be a Longjing 43. The odds are it's going to be a Longjing 43. And it has a very different aroma. I'm getting a bit more lotus, lotus seeds. I'm getting artichokes as well, maybe steamed artichokes. Yeah, definitely artichokes. I'm getting a slight floral note, a little bit of orchid, tiny bit of orchid floral note happening. And it's definitely warmer than this one here. Yeah, this one's definitely brighter, has more of that sea air and green mangoes going on. This one here is a bit calmer. It's still got vibrancy, of course, but is definitely a nice balance. And this one here. For those of you smelling along with me, roasted bean note. It's incredible. It's just like so beany, but like roasted bean. I can't explain it. And I know that will put off some people. And it certainly was something that I had to get my head around, but wow nutty, I'm getting roasted chestnuts, not too dark roasted, but it's there. And there is some brightness happening as well. Some vegetal note, like a, but also a herbal note, like juniper, a little spice happening. So vegetable soup, bay leaves, juniper, I'm getting roasted beans. It's definitely in that sort of winter soupy vegetable note. Please don't let that put you off because I know when I smell that, it means it translates to sweetness. And finally, 2018, for those of you lucky enough to get one of these, immediately sweet cherry sakura, cherry blossom. It's amazing. Very, very cherry note. And I'm also getting some of those roasted chestnuts. Similar, I can pick up similar notes to here and smell these two together. That's the difference a year makes. Bright, fresh, vibrant, even though it has those nutty notes. And here, it's just gotten a little bit more dense, the aroma. It's definitely got more fruity, a little bit more of a fermented note. So, one of the things that I want to talk about in this session is, is one year old green tea always not worth buying? In my opinion, 
That's not the case. Some people will really love that cherry Sakura note. If you do, then you might be actually looking for a tea which is a year old or buy a fair amount of your tea and allow it to age naturally in your cupboards yourself. All right, we're gonna give these a brew. You could, in fact, you should take your time with this tasting session. I'm going a bit fast because I'm conscious of your time, but make sure you hit pause, take your time. You could have smelt the dry leaf, for example, rather than going straight into smelling the wet leaf. So take your time, no problem, pushing pause, I will be here. Right, we're gonna be brewing these up. Again, just over 80 degree water. We wanna brew them for about 15 seconds. I'm gonna try and do a simultaneous brew, so let's go. Fill it up. I'm counting in my head. And then into the long gene 43 and straight out with the other one. For all of those timing me, it'll be there or thereabouts. You're gonna get more accurate yourselves, I'm sure. but it's gonna definitely give me enough information to assess these teas. So same here, the Chunti Jong variety. And we've got the 43 from 2018. This one comes straight out. This is Gong Fu Brewing, very, very quick. That's the advantage of using this many leaves. And there you go. We have four Long Jings for us to enjoy. I'm gonna put these to the side. Again, making sure I don't mess up the order. I'll put this flight box down. There we go. So there we're clear. Like this, let's take a look at the color of these liquors. Do they differ? Do they differ for you? Let me take a look. Well, clearly here I can see this one is definitely the most yellow. This is sort of like a, almost like a hay or buttercup yellow. This one here is very, very vibrant. Surprisingly, this one is pretty vibrant too, but these two I would say are very similar. Right, here we go. Tasting time, the best time, and really the only way to truly assess the quality of Longjing. The visual markers that I gave you before do hold true. You can definitely use them to make some decisions, but ultimately it's all about the taste. So here we go. We're gonna start with the Wu Nyu Zhao. Let's take a look at these colors again, because actually it looks different in the cup. I'm gonna show you here. So these two here are a little bit clearer and therefore they sort of give the appearance of brightness, but they're definitely clearer. This one is definitely a little bit more uh, yellow than, than the others, but this one here is so clearly different. Very, very different color for the Chun Ti Jong variety. Here we go, Wu Nyu Zhao. Let's concentrate on texture. For a Long Jing tea, I would say that is relatively light. It's fresh, it's not very thick. We're gonna roll through them and we're gonna just be talking about texture. This one here is definitely thicker and smoother. It has less of that astringency. Not, this one didn't have a lot of astringency, but it, this one definitely has less astringency. Long Jing 43 is thicker and softer. Chunti Jong, the thickest of the lot, in my opinion, has a sort of creamy texture to it. Really thick and creamy and soft. And finally, Longjing 43 2018, similar, I would say, in terms of texture to the Longjing 43. This is the most important part of Quality is now taste and aftertaste. 
Wu Nun Zhao. What are we getting? I'm getting a raw green note coming through. Of course, it still has some of that Longjing nuttiness, but the nuttiness is more, it's light, it's sort of like peanut butter or steamed or boiled peanuts. So a light nuttiness, not roasted in any way. And I'm getting this astringency, a dryness, a green raw note like a sappy sort of meadow note, a little bit of cut grass, not a lot. The term cut grass is used so often in the uh, description of green tea. And something that I'm really starting to appreciate as a tea buyer is that for a lot of green teas, especially for Longjing, cut grass is actually something that you're not looking for in green tea. Green tea shouldn't taste just like raw leaf. Uh, for most of these teas. For the Chinese, green tea should taste like something that has been transformed. So that rawness, that greenness has been transformed. Longjing 43, altogether softer, altogether more gentle. The nuttiness has moved a little bit more into those chestnut notes. Slightly roasty, toasty note going on there. A little bit of that roasted bean note that I know this one is gonna be packing a big punch with. This one here, it has some greenness. What is that greenness? Maybe like green beans. So if this was more meadows, this is moving a little bit more into the, the vegetal roasted green beans. It's also got a sweeter, note like sweet rice milk. So it's got a bit of a creamy note and a sweeter note. Chun Ti Jong, the traditional. And I have to say, we have selected this tea as our standalone Imperial Green for 2019. So I know I love this tea. I'm a little bit biased. Wow. Roasty, roasted beans. I'm getting Bolotti beans, roasted bolotti beans. But there is still some green in there, especially after you've swallowed. It's sort of like you get this warmth of bolotti beans and roasted chestnuts. And after you swallow, then you get this brightness that suddenly emerges, this sort of uh, fresh, very cooling, refreshing note coming in the mouth and a slight citrus zing going on, like a lemony citrus zing happening. And this transformation is what I love and is something that I would urge you to seek out for when you are selecting not just Longjing, but teas in general. You're looking for that journey. Thick, deep, creamy, nutty, moving to, bright, citrus, a little bit of um, just like, imagine that sort of dewy mountain, like waking up from camping and you've got that dewy note that's in the air, that's that fresh dewy note. It's not cut grass, but it's like the, the liquid or the dew that has settled on that grass. And the sweetness that is starting to emerge from this is excellent, like a lemony, like a limoncello sweetness, lemony and, and sugary, very, very distinct sweetness coming on through here. So if we ignore this for a second and we just focus on this, I would say that generalizations, and I'd be interested to hear what everybody tasting along thinks in the comments section below, but I would say that this one is the most light in terms of uh, texture has the mo most green raw note to it in terms of taste and also in terms of astringency on the tongue, even though it is light astringency, with things like flowery, meadowy sap and cut grass with some steamed peanuts and a little bit of that green mango tang. The Longjing 43 is definitely more lotus seed and... Um, a little bit of roasted green beans, not heavily roasted, but just imagine you've taken some runner beans or you've just sort of steamed them and snap. It's got that sugar snap edamame note going on there. So it's warmer than this one and the Chunti Jong 
gives you the most transformation. Texture is thicker, creamier, softer. You get deep roasted bean note, moving to this citrus, bright, fresh, dewy sweetness. Now we're gonna taste the 2018. The 2018 is exactly the same supplier as this one here. Very, very different color. Mm. So immediately it's like I've taken like a cherry cough sweet and I've just sort of just stirred it into this tea a little bit. So Sakura, it's just cherry blossom note. And this brings a sweetness to the tea. Now, when I'm tasting teas and I taste that note, it's immediately a, a sign to me that that's an older tea. And that may influence my buying decision. But just on the basis of taste, do I think it's worse than this one here? Depends what I'm looking for. This one has more of a bright, fresh, almost slightly soapy note to it. This one here, definitely a little bit a little bit less of those top notes. You definitely lose some of the vibrancy, but you gain in some sort of fruity sweetness. Let's have a sniff of the empty cup. Here we go. The Wu Nyu Zhao, light. Mm. A little bit of sweetness, a tiny bit of zest, Almondy, I would say, like a very sort of raw almond sweetness to it. But it is quite light. Tiny bit of almondy nuttiness, maybe frangipan, a little bit of sugared almonds in there. The Longjing 43. Light again, but the, there is definitely a bright sort of grapefruit pomelo zest note happening, a bit more stony, a bit more mineral. It feels like there's more substance to these leaves in the smell of the empty cup. Chun Ti Jong. Big, big difference. To my nose, big difference. And this is why I keep on banging on when I talk to people about the smell of the empty cup being a real marker for the quality of the leaf. I'm getting a sweetness that's not so zesty. It's more, it's more real fruity sweetness. Maybe it's strawberries. Yeah, I think it is. Strawberries and maybe a little bit of almonds. Yeah, really, really lovely. And the taste, Definitely the finish on it is the longest, but we'll talk about that in a second. And finally, yeah, that Sakura smell, that cherry smell stays very cherry-like. Amazing that that's the same tea, just a year older as this one, because the difference in aroma is remarkable. If anything, longer lasting on this one, although it does seem to be fleeting away. Finally, we're gonna talk about finish and I can tell you immediately what I think about this. This is one of the skills that you gain when you uh, taste a lot of teas is that even though you're tasting multiple teas, you can pick out the one which is giving you the longest finish and it is, for me, by far, this one here. The Chun Ti Jong variety is giving me the longest lasting finish. It's a sweet lemony finish. How do I know that? I know you're thinking, I've tasted lots of teas. Because of the fact that when I taste that tea, I notice a note that develops immediately after I swallow. And that is the note that has persisted. So I know it's this one here. That's how I know it. But let's go through it. Try the Wu Yu Zhao again, really lovely. I really do love, love this tea. That's why I selected it. Really raw, bright. It's got a sort of slaty, um, rockiness happening in the texture. Very, very nice structure in the mouth. It definitely leaves you with a dry finish, moving to a sort of simple, sweet, like powdered sugar, sweet aftertaste. Gentle, light, simple, but very, very nice. Longjing 43, definitely more orchid note coming through on this tea. And that 
is usually if they have fertilized the soil with rapeseed. So if you take rapeseed and you take, you extract the oil to make rapeseed oil, they then have the sort of byproduct and they will sometimes use that in fertilizing the soil and that will bring out more of the orchid aroma in the tea. Again, has the structure, has the minerality of this one, but is just a little bit warmer. Just a little bit warmer and the finish has more citrus to it. A little bit more of the lemoniness that the Chun Ti Jong does, less of the simple icing sugar sweetness of the Wu Nui Zhao. Oh, Chun Ti Jong, I've fallen in love with this tea. Um, finish much longer, much more vaporous. You breathe out through your nose and you can feel this sort of fug, this sort of density of, of aromatics just hanging around in your mouth, in your throat, and in your nose. Definitely more rich in those basier, deeper notes. The finish moves from a slight dryness to this sort of bright, bursting sweetness, limoncello, lemon. I'm getting some frangipan, I'm getting some almonds. It's just altogether more complex, which is why when I smelt those wet leaves and I was like, that roast bean aroma, tells me that I'm gonna get a more complicated and more complex finish. That certainly is the case. Longer lasting, sweet, juiciness around the, around the sides. Really, really lovely. Long Jing 2018 from the number 43 cultivar. Obviously got that cherry note that lingers and I would say, yes, it is got a sort of citrus zing around the sides. I really like it. So let's try to wrap this up. We are not gonna do body sensation. It's impossible for me to ascertain which one of these teas is giving me any body sensation, but we can take a little look at these wet leaves. Please, please, please infuse these teas. Have a nice, long, expansive session. That's what this flight box is for. Really, you can dive deep with second and third and fourth infusions and see how they develop. And I would love to hear your comments as well. Please do let me know which tea you prefer and which flavor notes you are getting out of these teas. It's just me drinking, so I don't mind me sticking my fingers in these leaves. I know that there'll always be comments saying, please use tea tools, but it's just me and I have no problem with that. So let's take a look at them. Now, you can see the picking, super, super fine picking. A bud, a leaf. Definitely I would say the Chun Ti Jong has more consistency and wholeness. These ones here are fine pickings, but look a little bit more raggedy. Especially I would say the Wu Nui Zhao here which just has a little bit more of those sort of flared leaves. But they are all very, very high quality pickings. Right, let's wrap up all the things you need to consider when you are assessing the quality of your Long Jing tea. First of all, the look of the leaves. You're looking for leaves which have a consistency of color, a vibrancy of color, and a consistency of shape. Ideally edging towards the more shorter, fatter, and heavier, more dense leaves and buds. Pick up the tea leaves. This is one of the things that they do in China when you've got lots of sacks of Longjing. You pick them up and you just start to get a feel of the weight of the tea leaves, heavier, tends to be higher quality. After they've unfurled, you can certainly take a look at the pickings. Again, you're looking for consistency, a nice fine picking like these all here, ideally moving towards this as the more pinnacle grade, which is very, very consistent with more of those shorter and fatter buds. In terms of taste, this is really personal opinion. If you're looking for more of the green, fresh, 
notes of a green tea, then move towards Wu Nyu Zhao as a cultivar to choose. If you're looking for warmth, complexity, that traditional roast bean aroma moving to a more sweet, complex finish, then go for Chun Ti Zhong. If you are looking for that balance in between, then I think Longjing 43 has its rightful place and is one of the reasons why it is one of the most cultivated Longjing varieties because it has that balance. The trend in tea drinking is definitely moving towards more of the green notes. I actually am moving the other way. As you can probably tell from this video, I am loving the traditional warmer, nuttier notes that then transform into a sweeter, more zesty note, then going for the more bright verve and green notes of these cultivars, but I'm definitely going against the trend. And I have to say, I wonder whether or not the trend is directing the movement towards these newer cultivars, or it's the other way around, and whether or not the farmers want to move towards these cultivars because they're earlier harvesting and have higher yield, and therefore the market is sort of naturally moving, thinking that that is what Longjing should taste like. Certainly, if you go to Zhejiang province, especially if you go to Shihu, all of the traditionalists are wanting Chun Ti Zhong and wanting that roast bean aroma. But as I said, totally up to you, totally up to your taste, and maybe get a, dip, a few different varieties depending on how you're feeling on any one day. Very important though, is that to assess quality, you need to focus on the aftertaste and the smell of the empty cup, because this will give you so much information about the quality of the leaf, how much endurance you're gonna get out of the leaf, how many different infusions, how long the session is gonna last, that is really gonna be defined by the substance of the leaf. So you're looking for those heavier, denser leaves, but you're also looking for a longer finish and you're looking for more persistent aroma in the empty cup. Please take your time with this. Enjoy this flight box. Dive deep, really, really right tasting notes. You've got tasting cards in the box. I've written a letter. Well, I'm going to write a letter all about these teas with my own detailed tasting notes. So focus in, take your time, don't rush it. Explore, expand your knowledge, and you will be a long Jing connoisseur by the end of it. That's it, tea heads. Check out our other videos and fire over any questions or comments. Taste our teas wherever you are in the world by visiting mayleaf.com. And if you're ever in London, then come visit our tea house. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad. Tea. Bye.